President Trump was supposed to honor the Super Bowl winning Philadelphia Eagles at the White House today, but instead that ceremony was canceled after the White House noted that Eagles players had boycotted the visit, some of them. Instead, a patriotic event honoring the national anthem was held. This isn't the first political tiff we've seen like this, but it is redolent with symbolism. Both the anthem and the celebration of sports champions have become politicized. What is happening to this country exactly? Charlie LaDuff is a longtime reporter, Pulitzer Prize winner, worked for the New York Times for a long time, author of a new book whose title we can't tell you, Bleep Show, The Country's Collapsing. Charlie LaDuff joins us tonight. Charlie, thanks a lot for coming on. You've traveled the country outside the cities more than I think any reporter I know, and so maybe you're best situated to answer the question, what are people really worried about? What do Americans stare at the ceiling tiles and think of at night? Their children, the future of their children, how they're going to eat, how they're going to get educated, if the water's going to be clean, if there's going to be work, how much debt they're going to be piled with. I mean, uh, they're worried about their brothers who come back from a war and they get popsicle sticks to walk around on and they don't get a, an appointment at the VA. They're worried about their families. I think Americans are pretty rugged, pretty tough people, and they're not scared for themselves. But when you look out into the long distance and you look at an establishment, an elite establishment that doesn't care about you and the media looks at you as an abstract, you get angry. So I just think they're worried about the future. Do you, do you think the media, I mean, you would know since you spent a lot of your life in elite media, you think that the media do look at the rest of the country as abstractions? Don't you think? Don't you think we got caught out and uh, the media apologized for not understanding what was happening and that they're going to double, they promised to double down and, and get to know the people and yet they haven't because the split screen has turned into an octagon and the, the desk is now two desks with the host walking in between and this guy over here keeps trying to put makeup on me and I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you tell him to stop. I was like, come on, man, I don't wear makeup. So, but what, I mean, what about that? It's, I mean, that's kind of a great question that I'd forgotten, to be completely honest. After November, there was this feeling that, gee, we kind of missed the story. Maybe we should, you know, get into that dark space between Georgetown and Malibu, but no one ever did. I mean, you live in the Midwest. I do. Why did and nobody you know ever you venture out there to find out what was going on? Well, because it's too hard. Because you'll go there when Flint's poisoned, but you don't come later when it's kind of not poisoned. Right? What happened to Flint? Come on back. Or let me just say this. It wasn't a great, the, it's not a great white menace, right? You know how many people were at Charlottesville? You know how many of these racist baboons were there? I don't know. The media never bothered to count because you want to make this, well, half, half of Trump's voters are, are just flat out racist. It's not true. Nine million of them voted for Obama and four million blacks uh, decided not to vote because they're not going with the establishment elite crooked right. Hillary. They just weren't doing it. And so, again, it's about jobs. It's about work. And, and I know, like, you know, uh, unemployment's low. But what's it paying? What are wages really doing? What's the wealth look like? How many come so many people live in apartments? It's serious out there. And it goes all the way from Boston to Bakersfield. And it's time you all come out, take a look, and spend some time, some real time. What do you think the biggest story we're missing is from the cities? From this, there, there's no loot, dude. That, you know, like, uh, from where I live, it's, we, we think it's a house of cards again. It feels like 2006 again. Like, uh, the, the Dow is overblown, right? And real estate's overblown. And yeah. you're nervous about if you're even going to buy a house because is, is your timing wrong again? What's the monetary policy? You're trying to make decisions for your people and you're not sure what's, and it's not just America. Look at Britain, look at Austria, look at Italy, look at Mexico, look at Brazil. The whole world's sort of shaken and that, you know, we need to get in there, but it, it's a real scary place to get to. I totally agree with that. I feel that way too. I can't quite put it into words, but I think I know that you're on to something. And I haven't read your book, but I'm going to because I read all your books. Charlie Duff, thank you Everybody for that. Everybody says that. Thanks, brother. Thanks Everybody said, and they're right. Good to see you. Out in Chicago, Catholic priest Michael Fluger, Michael Fluger has made a name for himself championing gun control. He's particularly vehement in his attacks on gun sellers. This is Obama's friend. You'll remember him when you see his picture. Fluger once called a, for a seller, a gun seller, to be, quote, snuffed out. He blames gun stores for the existence of illegal guns. Here's a sample. No child is safe right now while guns are accessible and on the streets all over our country. We must hold gun shops and gun runners accountable. Yeah. 
and those who purchase the guns and sell them illegally. What a demagogue that guy is. You can probably guess where this story is going. Anti-gun activists are highly predictable. Father Flager is happy to denounce the gun rights of you and me. And yet photos at rallies show that he is routinely, brace yourself, protected by multiple armed guards. And of course, it gets even weirder than that. One of Flager's bodyguards was arrested just last week for standing outside his church playing with an illegal gun. So maybe it's time for Father Flager to be held accountable himself. Of course, he won't be. China's efforts to spy on this country.